There's only one other thing in the world that we do where we use all of our senses, where we're listening, we're tasting, we're touching, we're hearing, it's a fun thing to do, but cooking is the same way. Listening to how the pan's going, smelling it, tasting it, you're touching it. You're doing all the same things that you do in that other thing, but you get to eat at the end too. Come on, this is Playboy. <laughs> we're G-rated here. I hear you, right, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Chef David, fishing with dynamite. Yep. That sounds illegal. Is that legal? It is say? illegal. It is illegal. We don't actually fish with dynamite. When we opened up Fishing with Dynamite, we had so many people at our other restaurant, Manhattan Beach Post, requesting more seafood. And there's not a raw bar within miles. So it was kind of like, hey, if we open up this restaurant, it'll be kind of like fishing with dynamite. So what are we making today? Okay, so we're going to make a koshi hikari rice dish, which is kind of like a risotto style dish, but it's more Japanese style. So we're using a short grained rice. This is like a sushi rice? Yeah, it's similar to a sushi rice. Okay. It's got this great texture to it. It's short grain. It's got a good amount of starch, basically like a risotto. But instead of chicken broth or beef broth, we're using what we call a katsuadashi broth. And so it's got that kind of Japanese flavor to it that you get with most of their soups. So we're going to take um, some olive oil here, extra virgin olive oil, and you can see the pan's already nice and hot. I'm going to use a lot of olive oil here. And the reason I'm going to use a lot of olive oil is I want to make sure that I can coat the rice. I don't want it to be sticky later. I want to have individual grains. Mm -hmm. So it's not like a bunch of mush. It's actually going to be a bunch of grains that have this kind of creamy broth from the other items that we're going to add to it. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some shallot and garlic. I don't want to cook it too much. I don't want color on it. I just want to sweat it. Next thing I'm going to add is white wine. It'll bubble right away. That white wine's gonna add a little bit of acidity, a little bit of depth to the dish when we make it. So it doesn't take long. The liquid's cooked off, and now I just see the oil in there again. So now I'm just gonna start adding our katsuadashi broth, a little bit at a time. We're gonna constantly stir. You want those grains to rub against each other, and that starch to start just coming start out releasing, of the- Because that's gonna be the creaminess That's gonna dish. be the creaminess to it, right? We're not gonna add cream to this. The whole creaminess of this is gonna come from the cooking of the rice, and adding the stock and drawing the starch out and then it'll reabsorb it, and then you add the stock and it'll draw that starch out and it'll reabsorb it again. So you can hear this now starting to sizzle, right? That means yeah. the fat and the liquid are becoming almost the same amount. You can see it's starting to get creamier. I'm gonna continue to add another batch of the katsudashi broth. About how long is it taking to like cook it down? You want it to be like 90% of the way cooked. And then we're gonna start adding our last ingredients. By the time we're done with the last ingredients, the rice should be perfectly cooked through. So, next thing we're gonna add now is we're gonna add some shrimp to it, okay? Okay. This is just shrimp that we've cut up into nice chunks. We're gonna add those in there. And what's gonna happen is they're gonna start to turn pink right away. You see that? Mm -hmm. So it's gonna take about three to four minutes for that shrimp to cook. For sure. So now I'm gonna take some of the blue crab meat. We have nice, lump blue crab meat. You don't need to do too much, okay? Because it's really rich and you've got a lot of different ingredients, so you don't want it to be all crab. Mm -hmm. Now I'm just getting a little less aggressive with my stirring. But look at that, it's starting to get thick. I'm gonna add a little knob of butter. I've got some basil here. I'm doing the basil a la minute right now. Why? Fresh, it's yeah. gonna taste fresh, right? I'm gonna check that rice. Yeah, it's getting really small now. And there's just a little bite. Just like risotto, you wanna have a little bite. They say al dente to the tooth, right? I'm gonna add a little bit of lemon juice. That's the acidity. So I've got my basil. I've got sea urchin, beautiful golden sea urchin roll. Now watch when I add this, these nice tongues as we yeah. call them. It's gonna just turn creamy, see that? It's almost just like the butter, right? So I'm gonna start really working the pan now. You can hand me that bottle, that's shiro dashi. Just give a couple squirts of it, okay? So all I need is a little bit of salt, and I'm gonna just add a little knob of butter again. So look at that, that butter just starts to melt. It looks like risotto, right? Yep. Look at those big chunks of shrimp in there. It's turned to kind of like this pinkish golden hue. Yeah. What we want to do is we just want to make a little nest area there. That's going to be for one golden fertile egg. Okay, so we want to get that out of there and have just one beautiful little yolk. We're going to hit that yolk with a little bit of salt again. We've got some beautiful green onion here. That's going to add a little bit of bright onion flavor because everything else in there is cooked, you know? Yeah. And then last, we have some nice orange flowers, that beautiful color contrast. Yeah, so this is our koshi hikari rice with blue crab, shrimp, sea urchin, and katsudashi. When you see it yolk that perfect, you just want to get right in it. So right. I should just break it? Yep. And you just kind of mix it all together? Exactly. You know, this is a rich thing, but when you taste this, this is just an umami bomb. You're going to just get this, like, comfort level of a, like, warm blanket. That's so good. It is... Pure seafood. There is a little bit of sweetness. You get sweetness through it. It's like that brininess. Yeah. But then you've got 
that shirodashi, the lemon, the white wine to balance it. And then at the end, you've got these nice little perfect pearls of rice. It's using that starch to provide the creaminess so it's not all just adding fat to make it yeah, creamy. Yeah, we added like maybe a tablespoon of butter to that, maybe. And the texture is great, like you said. The grains still have their integrity. We've got guests coming back and coming back and they'll get one and they'll be like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm gonna do this, but I'm gonna get two. You know, and you're like, get two. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Truffle cheese, and I'm gonna throw right on top of that. So while this is cooking, we're gonna let it kind of start to melt, and then we'll finish it in our cheese melter when it's ready to come out. And we're gonna pop this back into our cheese melter. At home, you could use an oven broiler.